Well, a warm welcome to this talk. It's latish on Friday the 19th of May. Now, I want to be looking at the ongoing excess deaths in the United Kingdom, Canada and uh, Australia today. And we know that this is duplicated, sadly, in, in all of the sophisticated Western countries. A bit less in uh, Eastern Europe, but in Western Europe, um, New Zealand, Canada, Australia... Uh, United Kingdom, Ireland, excess deaths uh, are high and, and sadly remain high in most areas. But before we do that, I just want to show you about the COVID symptoms. Now, the, the uh, Zoe Symptom Tracker app, or the Zoe Health Studies is now called, is still monitoring this. Um, so very useful, showing that the symptoms in COVID for the vast majority of cases are incredibly mild, uh, sometimes asymptomatic, often asymptomatic and uh, very common cold-like. Let's just run through those very briefly now. So 60.45% um, of people that get COVID that are testing positive, uh, that, that percentage get a sore throat. So sore throat, the most common feature. Blocked nose, common cold feature. 57.17% get a blocked nose. Runny nose. It's just so classic common cold, isn't it? Just under 53%. Headache. Again, common cold feature. Sneezing. Half, almost half of people get uh, sneezing who have COVID. Exactly that, like a common cold. Cough without producing much phlegm. Uh, 46%. Hoarse voice. Again, classic. 40%. Cough with phlegm. Coughing up some mucus. 40%. Muscle pains. We can all relate to this so well, can't we? Fatigue, dizziness, lightheadedness. Um, altered smell is a more specific COVID-type feature, uh, but usually uh, transient in most cases. Uh, sore eyes, exactly as we get with a cold. Swollen neck glands. That is a more specific COVID feature again, but 18.65% uh, getting that. Loss of smell, again, common common cold feature. Shortness of breath, more of a specific COVID feature, but 14.5% uh, and nothing like as severe as it was when people were getting the COVID pneumonia, of course. Earache, shoulder and joint pain, fewer getting fever. But of course, you can get a fever with a common rhinovirus cold sometimes and uh, chest pain and tightness. So we see the vast majority of these are just completely common cold type features and um, the vast majority of us, nothing to, to worry about, really. Um, now, um, this is the relationship here between... Th this is um, what the orange line is, is non-COVID respiratory illness. Sort of common colds, in other words. And, and the, uh, the blue line is, is COVID respiratory symptoms. So again, we see pretty well the same, same symptoms. Common cold, more common than uh, COVID but uh, very difficult to tell apart uh, clinically in the vast majority of cases. So we see that these excess deaths are clearly not caused by COVID. I think we can say that fairly, uh, fairly definitively. Now, let's look at the excess deaths now in the uh, United Kingdom. Um, Week 16, that was the week ending the 21st of April, it was plus 22% above the expected number. That was 2,540 deaths. Week 17, it was 12.9% above the expected 1,569 deaths. Thankfully, in the latest data, it's now only, and we say only with some irony, uh, only 5.4% above what we would expect. Let's hope this trend continues downwards, but it's still 598 excess deaths in the week so we see that the excess deaths in the united kingdom are continuing yes they're fluctuating yes the numbers are going to be altered by holidays and reporting times which is probably why they were so particularly high on the week ending the uh, uh the week ending the 21st of april but they're still high and remain high now i'm going to look at canada now um canada's data is sometimes a little difficult to understand so i've recruited some help for this i'll talk about that in a minute Let's just look at um, the Canada data here. So this is Canada, both sexes, um, um, all ages, uh, basically excess deaths for the whole of the country. And uh, this is going up to January 2023. 20, uh, so most of this data here is for uh, 2022, as we see. Now, what we would expect, of course, is 
Because there's been uh, two pandemic years, 2020 and 2021, we would expect the excess deaths to be higher then because people, of course, died from COVID, COVID-related complications and COVID exacerbating pre-existing conditions. Um, but what we're actually seeing is the highest data here is for November, October. Th th this data here, the green line, is all is all um, 2022. So below that, we've got 2021, when we would expect it to be higher. And below that, we've got the purple line, which is 2020, which we would expect to be higher than the previous years. For example, that's uh, uh, 2019. But we're seeing it higher for most of um, 2022. Now, there was a bit of an Omicron peak there at the start. But what we're seeing from that graph is, is, is excess ongoing deaths, not specifically COVID related at all. In most cases, uh, ongoing in Canada throughout 2022. So these excess deaths are continuing there as in other places. Now, um, I've got some more data from Canada here, which is quite interesting. I'll just go down to it here. Here we have it here. So first of all, we see, as we would expect, that deaths are higher. These are the adjusted number of deaths, roughly the number of deaths that occurred are higher than the expected number of deaths because it's 2020. It's a pandemic year. We would expect that. And we would expect the same for 2021. But 2022 uh, is not what we would expect. Now, here we see the bit of a peak there in the uh, the actual number of deaths or the adjusted number of deaths, which are close to the actual number of deaths uh, during the early Omicron wave, because um, Omicron was uh, more deadly in the United States and Canada that was, than it was in the UK. But one question in my mind here is why they're using adjusted number of deaths and not actual number of deaths. Now, because this data is a bit difficult to understand, the, uh, I've, I've recruited some help from the, the eminent professor of statistics, uh, Norman Fenton. Professor Fenton's helped me with this data, so I'm going to be reading some of his comments in a minute. And they really are quite, uh, quite insightful comments, as, you, as you'll see. But let's just look at this data a minute. So this is the adjusted number of deaths, which is roughly the, the actual number of deaths. So the actual number of deaths observed uh, is, is at least the black dotted line, Professor Fenton notes, at least that number. Uh, now, whenever the black line, that's whenever this line, uh, the actual adjusted number of deaths is above the blue line, the expected number of deaths based on previous year's averages. Whenever the black line is above the blue line, it's probable that there were excess deaths. So we can see that apart from that tiny point there, it's probable there were excess deaths for all of 2022. Now, this is quite uh, quite staggering. Excess deaths for all of 2022, apart from one or two weeks in the entire year. Really quite concerning, but sadly consistent with what we've seen in other in other countries, but more consistently high number of deaths than in the United Kingdom. Now, um, whenever the black line is above the red dotted line here, um, whenever the black line is above the red dotted line, it's almost certain there are excess deaths. So this is the 95% uh, prediction interval, as it is, it's called. So we can see that because the black line here is above the red line most of the time, um, it's almost certain. 95% uh, or more certain that there is an excess number of deaths. Um, so it's likely there's been uh, excess deaths um, basically for all of 2022. Even here it's probable there was an excess number of deaths, but these times it's uh, very, uh, very probable, essentially. More than 95% likely there's an excess number of deaths. Um, which is is of a concern. Now, any number bigger than the red dotted line, um, Norman, uh, Professor Fenton says here, uh, any number bigger than the red dotted line, then we expect something new is likely causing this. So um, these higher numbers of deaths, it's likely to be something new that's causing it. I think that's maybe the most important thing uh, Norman's told us here. Um, any number bigger than the red dotted line, then we expect something new is causing it. Um, so quite what that is, of course, uh, we're not um, 
don't have the full information to answer. You you might have some ideas. Do do let me know what you think. But the data is unequivocal. Um, and most of the time, whenever the black line is above the red dotted line, it's almost certain uh, that there's an excess number of deaths. And we see that applies to all of 2022. And it's probable that uh, the blue line is what we would expect. It's basic, basically above that all the way through. So really quite concerning data there from Canada. Uh, the 2023 data for Canada, as you would expect, is not there yet. Um, so it tells us what the red line is and it tells us what the blue line is, but doesn't actually give us any data, which basically is a bit pathetic of the Canadian statistical authorities, really. But 2022 is complete and concerning. So um, good to get some data out of Canada, at least. So that's good to see. Now, we'll just finish off with some data from Australia. Um, so Australia, January 2023, what we've got data for. There were uh, 1,000, uh, sorry, 14,547 deaths in January, 12.4% above the baseline. So this is January 2023. This is the newest data we've got. So it looks like in Australia, the excess deaths from 2022, sadly, have carried on into January, 12.4% above the average. So we're seeing comparable increases above the average to the UK. Just remember the three-week uh, uh, figures above the average in the UK, 22.1%, 12.9%, 5.4%. So in January for Australia, being 12.4% above the uh, previous year's average is, is in that kind of area. So um, it looks like, um, we can't really say this, but the factors that are causing excess deaths in Australia and the factors that are causing the excess deaths in the United Kingdom, factorial factors, are basically causing the same percentage of increased excess deaths, despite being 12,000 miles apart. Um, yet the same, the same thing could well be causing... Now we can't say it's the same thing, but we can say it's the, roughly the same number, same increase in excess deaths. Um, it could be something of equivalent lethality in both countries. That is quite conceivable, I would have thought. Now, um, they do say it's 10.5% uh, less than January 2022, but that's not surprising because uh, mass COVID came to Australia late. Uh, COVID-19 caused 213 deaths in February, down from 731 in January. So we can see the COVID deaths are well down and, and will continue to go down. January to December 2022, um, but the, the was the, the, this is partly caused by the pandemic, of course, because as we said, it comes late to Australia. Uh, but overall, 15.3% deaths uh, above what we would expect. But the key figure there is that we own now, key figure there for Australia is the excess deaths were 124 in January. Now, we don't have more up-to-date data than that, sadly. That won't be with us for a couple of weeks, unfortunately. But when it does, let, let's hope that that January increase in excess deaths in 2023 was not continued as it has been in the United Kingdom. Um, if it was the same factor or factors causing the increased deaths in the United Kingdom and Australia, then sadly, it's quite possible that the excess deaths in Australia will continue. So I'm afraid, sadly, we are seeing these ongoing excess deaths. And what is just astounding is the degree to which this is not being covered in mainstream media. You've seen mine and Professor Fenton's interpretation of it here, or at least my interpretation of Professor Fenton's interpretation. Uh, so thank you for watching and, and check out below. I'll put some links to Professor Fenton's uh, YouTube channel and uh, Substack, which are both uh, excellent. So for now, thank you for watching.